Uh, we do a ton of work around moderators. We do elect formal moderators, but that's not really what I'm talking about here. It, it, it is a huge source of thought in the Stack Exchange Network. It's like, how do we appoint moderators? Who are the moderators? What are the qualities moderators have? And if you look here on the network, we have, for any given Stack Exchange site, there's at least three community moderators that were appointed and, and sometimes elected. We like to have elections, but the community has to be large enough. So this concept of having an election is giving power back to the community. We're saying, look, if, if you like this community and you hang out here enough, you could be appointed and have as much power, almost as much power as the developers do on the site. You can just go in and willy-nilly delete stuff if you want to. Um, that's something that's available to you if you get elected or appointed. But even outside of like formally elected moderators, individual members of the community get to do stuff based on this stuff. Hey, somebody upvoted me, right? There's the voting privilege I talked about. It's very early on. Um, flagging is another thing you get really early on. Uh, leaving comments, which is like basically discussion, which we try to suppress in the Stack Exchange engine, that takes reputation. The ability to edit anybody's post, right? Now, you can suggest edits as an anonymous user on any Stack Exchange site, but to go and just change somebody's site, uh, somebody's post, and have it go through immediately, that takes 2,000 reputation. So, right, if it's 10 points for an answer upvote, you know, you're looking at 200 uh, upvotes, right? Uh, 